this is Richard Slay, and today I am going to talk about the one and only thing that creates a bent note when you're playing the harmonica. There's only one thing that does this. There are many different techniques for creating this effect of bending a note. I'll play one. That's what I'm talking about, is bending notes, starting with a pitch and bending it down. And what is happening is you're tuning the inside of your mouth to reinforce a particular pitch. Now, of course, you also need to have a good seal around the hole so you're not leaking air because that destroys your control. But the one and only thing that makes this happen, the bent note effect, is, is changing the size of the space inside your mouth so that it reinforces a particular pitch. There's all kinds of techniques for doing that. You can do this tongue blocking and do this pursed lips and you're uh, creating a space inside your mouth. The back part of the space is defined by the, by the back part of your tongue closing a space off inside your mouth while still allowing air to move through. And you could call that the K spot because you, you're, one way to create that is if the way you pronounce the letter K. You hear how that pitch is changing. I'm changing the size of the inside of my mouth. Now, here's a harmonica without the cover plates. I'm going to play draw four. So what is happening here is the harmonica reed starts vibrating. Harmonica reed starts moving. And this, this reed is being pulled into the slot. It's a draw note. And then it's the spring is moving it back. And it, so it starts chopping up the air into little pieces and they create the vibration. So it creates a vibration and the tuning of the reed determines the range of how far you can change that vibration by changing the size of the space inside your mouth. I'm going to keep coming back to this. Here's another way to think of this concept. Here's, a, here's an instrument, a penny whistle. And when I play through the mouthpiece, the mouthpiece is called a fipple. And what it does is it slices the air up and in, in such a way that it creates a standing wave. When I put my finger down on this hole, what I'm doing is I am lengthening this tube. I'm making that resonant space larger and then the pitch starting with this initial pitch starts going down because now it's a bigger space which reinforces a lower note. So I'm tuning this tube with the harmonica you can play one reed at a time, if I close this upper, if I close the blow reed off, now the only reed that's vibrating is that draw four. I can get that reed to go down to a certain amount. So the reed will vibrate within a certain range. Now the blow reed, here's the interesting thing, the blow reed on this hole. I'm now going to put my finger on the draw reed that started the note. Now it's the blow reed that's vibrating because it's the, the size of the resonant space inside my mouth is now tuned to a vibration that that blow reed is capable of making. And so the reed 
vibrates at that pitch. It's the same principle as this penny whistle, changing that initial vibration to a lower vibration by making it bigger. That's the only thing, whether you're playing single reed bends, like on a chromatic, or double reed bends, like on a diatonic harmonica, or overblows. Overblows, the same, pot, the same technique creates the pitch. Now you're tuning the pitch to a different and then it becomes the draw reed that's playing that because I changed the size of the resonant space inside my mouth to match the pitch that I'm trying to get, that I want to get. Now just to make this process even more graphic, I came up with this idea. This is a slide whistle, you know, and it had one of these on the top of it, which I cut off, and then I rigged up this thing to put a harmonica into, so I'm playing whole three on this F harmonica, and then this plunger just does the same thing that you do with a penny whistle, except that it's a little piece that moves, you know, it's like a little piston that moves through the tube and sh length makes the tube longer or shorter. So it's changing the size of that resonant space. So this is going to make the, the process external. I, I will now keep the inside of my mouth the same and I will just move this plunger back and forth to create the bend. So here, here we go. Uh. So what's happening is if I move it too far, it's now reinforcing a note that these reeds can't play the, the, within the bending range. And then the only reed that plays is the, the, uh, the draw reed. But when I get within the range that you can play those other pitches, the combination of the two reeds, So it's the same. I'm doing the same thing inside my mouth that I'm doing with this device here. So what happens is when you play the harmonica and you start getting into this bending process, you want to be able to control one way or another with your tongue blocking, you're moving your tongue one way or another, up or down, or but, but the concept <clears throat> is that you're changing the size of that space in your mouth. And if you can get that concept in your head and begin experimenting with it, what happens is that, you know, people start working on and, and they're doing the same thing that I, was happening here, where, where I went too far, and then the, the, uh, the only read that would play would be the draw read. So this is what you're doing inside your mouth by moving your tongue, shaping the inside of your mouth one way or another. And what you, you, when you start woodshedding on this, you'll start getting a little bit of success, you'll start to dial it in, and then and boom, one day you just nail it. And then with that harmonica, once you get the idea, it's easy to start switching to other key harmonicas. And and your body your, just automatically figures it out for you. Once you get this,
concept. Your, your bio computer figures it all out for you. And it's just as miraculous as what happens when you speak. And I, I, am, I don't have to think at all about how I'm shaping all these sounds that are coming out of my mouth. And the same thing will happen with your bending if you just pay attention to what's working, what creates that pitch, and then just keep listening for what you want and keep trying different things until you get it. And then it just starts becoming more and more automatic. I'm going to recap. There's only one thing that makes the reeds bend on a harmonica, and that is that you tune the inside of your mouth to match a pitch that is within the range of the one reed you're playing or the two reeds you're playing. And if you just move with that concept, it's not magical thinking, it's not any kind of voodoo, it's a physical phenomena of changing the size of the space inside your mouth. So I hope you find that useful. My name is Richard Slay. I'll be doing more of these videos. If you like what you're seeing, you can join my channel. You can sign up for notifications so you know when I come up with a new video. You can leave comments. I really appreciate the comments and they give me ideas. I will respond to your comment or questions. So thanks a lot for listening and I'll be back soon with more ideas. Okay, thanks a lot.